everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to day 19 of Vlogmas. So if you've not seen one of these videos, um, what I did is at the beginning of the year, I asked my mom to wrap up 24 different books for me. They could be books that either she has read and loved or books that just made her think of me or whatever. Um, any book that she wants to challenge me with, that has happened a few times. So um, I did this last year as well, so I will link the playlist for last year down below. And so what this video will be is a little un unwrapping, um, a little book review, a little vlog, a little blast from the past, and that's it. So day 19, we are getting close, you guys. Uh, I want to know all your like Christmas prep. We're almost getting last minute. Are you done with shopping? Are you not? I don't know if I will be because it is October 22nd, and somebody just said something about like how many days till Christmas, and it instantly stressed me out because I have not really thought about Christmas at all. So um, today, like I said, is October 22nd. So depending on um, which doctor you ask, today or tomorrow is my um, third daughter's due date. Little did we know she's eight and a half weeks old already. So um, time flies when you're having fun. But we are having a beautiful weekend. It's 75 and just like the perfect fall weather. I'm cold inside. That's why I'm wearing this like fleece jacket. But otherwise, um, yeah, it's Saturday. We had soccer this morning. I stayed home with the baby and we did um, all sorts of fun things. Took a little walk and that's it. So let's just get into the book. Okay. I have no guesses what this is at all. Last one was a thriller, so maybe it's something different, but I'm picking these like in a random order. Okay, William Kent Kruger has uh, blurbed the back. Oh no, William Kent Kruger is the author. Ordinary Grace. Okay, author of This Tender Land. So I, I knew that name sounded familiar, and I couldn't think of why. I have not read This Tender Land, but I've heard really good things. This cover is like a really strange um, texture, but... Edgar Award for winner for best novel. Let's see, what's this about? Krista from Books and Jams, if you're watching this, have you read this? I feel like I've heard about this somewhere. Um, oh, and she wrote a note, book outlet sounded good. Okay, so once in a blue moon, a book drops down on your desk that demands to be read. You pick it up and read the first page, and then the second, and you are hooked. Such a book is ordinary grace. That's what HuffPost says. So, new... Uh, New Bremen, Minnesota, 1961. The twins were playing their debut season. Ice-cold root beers were selling out at the soda counter on Halderson's Drugstore, and Hot Stuff Comic Books was the mainstay on every barbershop magazine rack. It was, it was a time of innocence and hope for a country with a new young president. But for 13-year-old Frank Drum, a preacher's son, it was a grim summer in which death visited frequently and assumed many forms. Accident, nature, suicide, murder. Told from Frank's perspective 40 years later, Ordinary Grace is a brilliantly moving account of a boy standing at the door of his young manhood trying to understand a world that seems to be falling apart around him. It's an unforgettable novel about discovering the terrible price of wisdom and enduring grace of God. So, sounds like a Christian fiction. Um, this will definitely be different than what I'm reading right now. So, that sounds really good. Definitely different than the last thriller, too. So, I'm excited to try it. Hey, everyone. So, it is uh, a while later because I under underwent some vlogs and things that I put this on, on pause for. But now I'm picking it up. And I'm only like 15% of the way through, you guys. But I'm like kind of bored. And I think this is very literary fiction it feels like to me and that's just not my jam and I think it is my mom's jam because we're getting a lot of those so uh this is about a preacher's son and there is a lot of um death and thing go things going on in their town this month specifically the first one that we have witnessed is a young boy who was killed on the train tracks and so we're learning about this boy his friends kind of the community and he I think he says there's five deaths that summer or whatever it is and so um we're gonna go through all of them and see maybe God's grace through them. I wouldn't necessarily call this historical fiction, or I would call this historical fiction. I don't know that I'd necessarily call it um, Christian fiction, but it, he is a preacher's son, so maybe, maybe, um, I guess, yeah, you could categorize it however you want, but it's kind of slow for me, and I really have a hard time reading from male, like, by male authors from male perspectives. Like, 
I don't know why. Um, that just is kind of hard for me. So this is just okay. I hope I like it more. I'm not thinking I'm going to DNF it. I might just, I have it on audio, so I might just kind of speed it up a little and see if it gets better, um, if it gets more interesting. It's not that I'm not interested. It's just really slow and kind of literary, which is not my style. So that is it. I'll check in later. Hey everyone, it is a couple days later. Well, really only like one or two. I think I really like flew through this book, but um, because I wasn't loving it, like I kind of did what I said I was gonna do last clip where I kind of sped it up and just got through it. Um, so today is November 8th, I think. And um, Etta and I just got back from the retinologist. Apparently that is a thing that preemies have to do, um, get their retinas checked to make sure that their eyes have fully developed. Um, because her last check was sometime in the NICU and they hadn't fully developed, but she, neither had she. She was like 36 weeks or something. And so um, now she's past her due date and everything looks great. So she has to have one more check in a month with an ophthalmologist to um, make sure she doesn't like that her eye muscles are developing appropriately. So she doesn't like get cross eyes or something and um, to do as much of a vision test as they can, which... I don't know, but, um, because she's at a slightly higher risk of both of those, but he said she, he was really encouraged. And so that feels so good. Uh, I'm just so looking forward to the day where she is like out of the preemie, uh, classification, which I guess is two years old and she can just be a regular kid who doesn't get poked and prodded quite so much, but stressful for the mama heart. But I finished this book last night and it, like I said, it kind of stayed with, it's nothing wrong with the book. It is just not the book for me because this is very much a young boy's coming of age story. And, um, there's a lot of tragedy that happens. And so we get to see him try to overcome that. And like, there's just a lot of, um, it's just a lot of hard life happening to this kid and him trying to figure out how to become a man through it. And, um, grow up and deal with all of this stuff. And he's the big brother to a little brother. And, um, like there was nothing wrong with it. I just didn't love it. So I would probably give it three, three and a half. I mean, probably three stars for me personally. I'm not going to reread it. I didn't love it. I didn't really like it. It's very much just, that's a book I read, but for people who really like, uh, coming of age, kind of historical sixties, I think is the timeline of this. Um, you would probably really like it because the writing was fine. It was really like a well done book, just not the book for me. So that is my thoughts on that. Um, let me know if you've read this or if you're interested now and, um, that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.